Welcome to the finals of the 2012 Seiko European Championships. We are in for a treat, as this is the first time a final will be decided in a theater-style racing format, where the sailors must race in a contained lane. We'll have three races to determine the top four, and then a grand final to determine our gold medalist. Conditions here are perfect in Lake Garda, Italy, with a sunny 15 knots as the fleet sets off for the first race. The Spanish and Brits have a good start, coming toward us while the Irish and Croatians head off on starboard. Both the Brits and the Spanish win the first cross to take the lead. On the next tack, the Danes in boat one make a pass using their innovative tower trapezing technique. At the windward mark, it's the Brits holding their starboard tack, forcing the Danes to duck as the fleet rounds the windward mark very tight. As the Brits and Spanish head upwind, the Spanish have found some magic on the near side and pull into a comfortable lead. The Spanish round the windward mark and hang on for the win. After the first race, the Spanish have moved into first overall, while the Danes, our leaders heading into this final, have dropped all the way down to fourth. Youth World Champions James Peters and Ed Fitzgerald have moved up into fifth after that second place finish. The fleet hits the line at full speed for the second race, with Croatia number four and France number six on starboard, while James Peters, the Brit, and Spain number three come at us on port. A quick tack by the French sets the stage for the first cross. James Peters is forced to tack by the lane boundary, and the French team of Mathieu Frey and Jan Richaud cross easily and tack. In behind, we see the Danes start to tower trapeze again. The Spanish tack and have to duck a whole bunch while the Danes try and catch up. The Spanish tack on the ley line and the French do the same right on their line. The rest of the fleet piles up while the French extend to take a solid lead around the mark. The French round the bottom marks with the lead, but behind them the action is very tight. The Spanish and Irish tangle at the go-left gate, with the Irish knocking Carlos off his boat, forcing a capsize. What a disaster for them as they're leading the regatta! We can see the spin pole of the Irish knock Carlos into the water as he tries to jibe. The French are still leading, but come under pressure from the Croatians. In the battle for the lead, the Croatians roll the French. They both jive back toward the finish line and it's so close. Oh, wow, too close to call. In the virtual replay, we can see how close it is. Our GPS says the Croatians have it. A fantastic pass by them for the win. The Croatians move into the lead with that win, while the Spanish are knocked down to third overall with their last place in that race. The points are very tight, as only the top four will move on to the grand final. On the bubble, we have the Spanish, the British, the French, and the Irish. It's a clean start with the French, Polish, and Croatians on starboard, with the rest of the fleet doing the port tack option. The French and Croatians now come back to the fleet without the right-of-way. If they can cross, they'll be in the lead. The Croatians have to duck, but the French make it across. The Spanish put in a beauty tack right at the lane boundary. 
They come across most of the fleet, but are very tight on the ley line. The Croatians, kings of the downwind, have a great tack, but have some catching up to do. As the fleet approaches the windward mark, the French are off, but the rest are battling. The Spanish don't look like they're going to make it. Oh no, they don't! And they have to go behind everyone. Oh, they hit the mark as well. That's them out of the grand final. The Irish are coming to the near side in second now. They need a good race to qualify. The French round the bottom in the lead with the Irish just behind them. As the fleet grows through the bottom mark, it's the Danes who lead overall and the Brits, James, Peters, who would be fifth if it finishes this way. The Brits here get the Polish on their hip and look to make a pass. As the Brits and Polish keep battling, they both have passed the Dane, moving James Peters into fourth in this race. He's now only one point behind the Irish. As they set their kites, the Poles dip a wing, slowing down. The French take the win with the Irish in second, but the Brits must pass one more boat. As they come out of their jibe, they shoot for the finish. It's James Peters, the Brit, emerging to take third place in this race and qualifying for the grand final. In this winner-takes-all grand final, we have a clean start. The Croatians and French stay on starboard with the Danes and Brits using the port tack option. Zooming in on Alan Norgard, we can see he's tower trapezing again. He swings back into the boat and then tacks back with the fleet. Coming up to the vital first cross, it's the Danes and Brits ahead. The French plant attack right beside the Croatians, giving them control. Now it's the French with the right of way. Will they be close enough? Yes, they are. The Brits and Danes have to duck and go behind them, moving the French into the lead. The French shoot in and tack around the windward mark, with the fleet close behind. The fleet heads downwind in a row and jibe for position. The French hold their lead into the bottom mark. It's really close between the French and the Danish now. As they come together, the French cross. Here's Alan though, he's not giving up as he jumps up and starts tower trapezing again. The French retain their lead and round the top mark in first. On the downwind they have maintained their lead, heading to the finish. and the French take the championship. Meanwhile, in the battle for bronze, it's the Brits and the Croatians are neck and neck. But the Croatians hit the mark. They must do a penalty turn, and the Brits head off for the bronze medal. And the French celebrate their win. Uh, Matthew Frey. Yeah. Jan Richaud, congratulations on Thank your you. victory here at the 2012 European Championships. Tell me how you feel. Happy, I think, in the world, because there was a lot of pressure for us today. We were six before the theater style racing, so a lot of job to do. We don't do pretty well at the first one, then we say we won't give up. Second in the second race, and then first. And the job was done to be in the grand final. Then uh, one, one shot, so we took it. <laughs>